Alrighty, it's time for another episode of Utah's Historic Architecture, and today we are talking about the Hall Parlor House. Um, this was the predominant house type uh, during the latter half of the 19th century in Utah. Um, <clears throat> it's often referred to as the Mormon plan, or at least it used to be, uh, because it's so ubiquitous here in Utah and the larger uh, Mormon culture region of the Intermountain West. Um, it's basically an extension, uh, one room extension of the single cell, which we talked about in a previous episode. Uh, the, the one, the larger room, as you can see in this uh, floor plan, is the hall, and then it would be a smaller a segment of a square for the parlor. So like the single cell, the hall parlor has ancient beginnings. Uh, dating back to possibly about the 13th century in England. Um, it kind of evolved over the years uh, and did not become that popular until the 16th and 17th centuries over in the UK. And by then it was found in two forms, first as an independent dwelling and as part of a larger structure that incorporated a service wing from which the hall and parlor was separated by an open cross uh, passage. So this picture is of a ancient longhouse, and you can see it has that cross passage through it. And I think in this, it shows use of um, housing animals on one side, on the left side, and then the hall area where the fire pit is on the right side. In its early form, there was only one floor, and the fireplace was found only in the hall. And, and it was typically a pit up until later on when it actually became a full-size uh, chimney and uh, hearth and structure. And uh, by the time the hall parlor reached the United States, uh, fireplaces and chimneys could be found on both the ends of the structure uh, if the formal parlor was large enough or on the ends. A uh, second story, whether a full or a half height room was also being incorporated into this design at this time. And the hall parlor was then became popular throughout the Eastern seaboard from the Northeast clear down to the South and eventually into the Midwest. And that is where um, most of the uh, Mormon settlers who came to Utah, who came from Nauvoo, probably learned about this form and brought it here with them. Although it could have come from others as well. Like uh, most other classically inspired architecture from the early settlement period of Utah, uh, the hall parlor is distinguished by a symmetrically composed uh, fenestration on the main uh, facade. Uh, this is not always in the case in other parts of the country and was not the case with the ancient beginnings of the plan, of course. This happened later on as the Adamesque and the classical styles uh, started to take over around the turn of the 19th century. And you can see uh, on this picture here that we have what we call a bilaterally symmetrical facade. So if you cut that right down the middle, it would be a mirror image on each side and the door in the middle and uh, a flanking window on each side. The, uh, you could either have uh, three or five bays. This uh, drawing shows the three bay, meaning three uh, fenestration openings, fenestration being the window and door openings. Um, that doesn't include the little shed lean to on the side. We're just looking at the main house form here. Uh, sometimes it could have two windows on each side of the door. And uh, both were uh, pretty common throughout the state. Uh, the doorway enters into the main room, which is the hall. Uh, if there's an upper level in the house, the staircase is generally placed in the hall uh, with the stairway either open or enclosed by a wall and the space under those stairs uh, used for storage or closet space. Um, depending on the placement of the chimney and sometimes the number of bays, a person could determine if a house is a hall parlor type just by looking at the exterior of it. On a hall parlor, uh, because the two rooms are uneven in size, the dividing wall where the chimney is placed is slightly off center. So you'll notice the door is centered on this, but the chimney on the rooftop is slightly off. That's because the wall has to support the, the brick chimney stack, and that is where the wall is. So on the left side of this building um, is the smaller room, and the right side is the larger room. If there are two chimneys placed on the gable ends, it's more difficult to tell from the outside if it is a hall parlor. So um, the center chimney 
or off center chimney, I guess I should say, is a dead giveaway. Um, although the hall parlor was one of the earliest housing types in Utah, it continued to be popular uh, into the 20th century, especially if there was a room added to the back and either a T wing or a shed lean to addition to make uh, add more space for the occupants to use. Uh, most closely associated with early classical styles, later hall parlor houses were embellished with uh, picturesque and especially Victorian detailing. And we'll see some examples of both here in a minute. Uh, at least a couple, if not several hall parlor houses can be found in almost every community in the state. Um, currently in our database, we show more than 4,800 examples that have been recorded in Utah, but there's obviously more than that because we haven't done a thorough inventory of the whole state as of yet. So with that, a brief introduction, let's look at a few examples and we'll discuss some different details that show on these. In a previous episode, we talked about the single cell house and how the typical uh, log building in Utah was usually a single cell. Uh, log construction was not a common building material in Utah because of the scarcity of trees in the valleys, especially those with longer trunks that could be used for longer logs. Uh, they wanted longer trunks, they'd have to go um, up into the mountains to get spruce or pine trees. Um, this ex example, which is located between the towns of Randolph and Woodruff up in uh, Ridge County in northern Utah, is estimated to have been built about 1895 for the Daniel Corbett family. Uh, the front door, as you can see, is right in the center, just like the previous drawing. Um, and it opens into the larger room on the right. And there's a set of stairs leading to the two bedroom upper story from that room. The doorway from the larger room leads to a small parlor on the left. So they're accessible inside, which uh, this room had a source of heat, uh, either a wood or coal stove. And the overall floor plan of this building is uh, 32 by 16 feet. The house is built with hewn logs. As you can see, it's got the um, squared off log facade rather than round logs, which required a little more work. It gave a better finished appearance. And it has half dovetail joints uh, holding the corners. You can see uh, piercing the wall just above the doors clear across the entire facade are end um, pieces of lumber. And those are the floor joists uh, for the upper floor um, projecting through to the outside. And then you can see, of course, the uh, brick chimney, which has started to come apart on top. Uh, the foundation, as was common with all early homes in Utah, is a combination of either uh, filled stone or cobblestone, uh, typically filled stone, that would have been fashioned in roughly uh, square or rectangular blocks, and then the logs uh, placed on top of that. This next example, um, again has the center, well, off-center uh, chimney. And as you look at this one, you'll notice it's a little more ornate than the previous example. Um, this is a later one uh, with some stylistic nuances that hint towards the Victorian era that was popular in Utah from about 1880 uh, up until 1910 or so. Um, the most commonly between the 1880s and around uh, 1900. I mentioned that the hall parlor type was being constructed into the early 20th century. And this particular example probably dates around the turn of the century, if not maybe a few years into it. The porch stoop and uh, porch columns uh, appear to be a little bit later addition, probably from the teens, as they um, mimic more the bungalow style with the square columns that are battered, battered meaning that they flare out to the bottom. Uh, the other, uh, Details on this that hint towards Victorianism are those segmentally arched window um, moldings, as well as the, the kind of fancy brickwork on the chimney, what we call corbel work. Segmental arches were more of a Victorian theme. Prior to that, the more classically uh, influenced homes had just flat arches on them. So um, as, as they got a little more ornate, then the, these little details I start to show more towards the, the end of the 19th century. This 
so um, this example is the Anderson House. Um, this was down in San Pete Valley. I think it is in Ephraim. Um, this is perhaps the earliest fired brick house um, in uh, San Pete County. But what's interesting about it is the color of the brick. Typically, um, early fired brick was more of a salmon pink color, like you see on the chimneys of this. But the wall brick on this is more of a buff color. And it's thought that this is more of a fired adobe rather than a regular clay brick, which gives it the color. Um, this has some interesting details on it that hint towards classicism in, in the Greek revival. If you look uh, closely on the left side on the gable end, you'll see some little uh, what we call cornice returns that come in down at the bottom of the gabled uh, roof there. Uh, that hints towards the Greek uh, temple pediment. Also, the pediment uh, hood moldings over the windows and door, uh, those are a Greek revival detail. Another nice little detail on this um, is the dog tooth brickwork right below the eaves. And those are just bricks that are laid in at an angle. So the pointed end of the corner um, sticks out from the brick. And you don't see that typically this early. That's more of a later Victorian theme. As I noted earlier, it makes it more difficult to determine if a house is a hall parlor if it has end chimneys, uh, such as this one. And we know because we've been inside of this house that it is a hall parlor. But if you were just looking at the outside, you could almost think that this was a uh, central passage, um, especially if it had a five bay facade rather than the three bays. It was a little bit wider. But this one is actually a, um, a hall parlor house. Well, here's another Sam Pete contender for the earliest brick house in the county. This one is the Jabez Faux House, uh, which is in Moroni. And this has a construction date of around 1867. And the brick on this is more common, the pinkish uh, fired clay brick. So it could be argued that both of these are the earliest brick homes in the valley, just different kinds of brick. This one, again, has some interesting details on it. Uh, again, it, you can see on the left side in the gable end, um, those little cornice returns, which our Greek revival detail. Um, the little brackets you see running along the front right below the eaves, those are more of an Italian eight detail, typically found on eye houses, which is uh, a type of um, central passage house that we'll discuss in a different episode. Um, the porch on this, I'm not sure if it's original or not, the scroll work at the top of the posts um, is interesting, and it's kind of difficult to determine when that was done. It could have been later 19th century or early 20th century. I don't think it was original to the construction of the house. Uh, one other interesting thing on this is, if you look closely, you'll see the randomly coursed ashlar uh, stone uh, foundation. And you'll see on this that it goes clear up to the window seals on the front of the building. Um, this isn't usually typical, but because this is on a downward facing slope, um, it starts high at the back, but then as the front is more exposed, the foundation goes up higher. And so, and it, the color of it kind of blends right in with the bricks, so you don't really notice it unless you look closely. If you look at the little floor plan on the bottom right, um, you'll see that this is a hall parlor, although it is almost wide enough that it could be a central passage. Um, the living room is on the, the right or the hall, uh, the bedroom or the parlor, is on the left. And this one has a staircase, as you can see, with an enclosed wall. It also has a, a T-wing addition with two little side additions to the left of that that were later um, added. And I'm not sure if the T-wing off the rear was original to the construction of the house or if that was later as well. Okay, um, I mentioned that we were going to talk a little bit about more fanciful architecture. Um, these are examples of picturesque style, and they have hints of both Victorian eclectic and Gothic revival uh, details. Uh, the Gothic revival is very apparent in the cross gable on the top building, the, the gable end uh, at the front of the house, as well as on the bottom house in those gable dormers. Um, any type of gabled dormer is a Greek revival 
uh, or sorry, a Gothic revival influence. Uh, you'll notice on the bottom one, it has flat arched windows. It was a much earlier house. Um, in fact, all the, the windows have um, no arch to them at all. Uh, whereas the upper one was built a little later, more around the 1880s or so. And it has, again, those uh, what we call rounded segmental arched windows that were popular Victorian times. So these have both a little bit of um, Gothic revival and Victorian uh, influence. And the top one also has a little bit of Italian aid influence, again, in the brackets over the cornice along the front of the house. Um, I want you to notice an interesting thing about these two. If you look closely there, they both have doors on the top floor. And the doors don't really provide access to anything. So what are these doors? Um, folklore uh, suggests that they were called angel doors um, in rural areas. And that was probably just a colloquial term they used for a door on a second story that did not really access anything. If you look at the bottom one, um, there is not really a place for that door to go. Whereas on the top one, if you look right below the door, there's some dark, uh, I guess you could call it paint or just uh, shading uh, kind of across the front there, as well as um, two diagonally uh, shaded areas to either side of that dark area. Uh, these are ghosting um, from previous porches that used to be on the house. Um, we think the original porch was probably just a flat one that covered the front door. And then it was later added to with more of a bungalow style port, a hip roof porch. Um, hence the, um, the little diagonal striping there. So we know that the top door of this provided access to the, the roof of that porch, it's a little veranda. Um, the bottom one, however, there was no real indication that there was ever a porch on this house. So why would they have a door? Um, well, there are a couple of reasons, mostly the fact that they needed to get furniture to those top floors. If you've ever been inside one of these homes, you'll know that the staircase is very narrow and they're very steep. And once you get to the top, it's a very tight turn to get back around um, into the room or to the hallway. So that makes it difficult to haul larger furniture items like a wardrobe or a sofa. So what they could do is have that upper door and then um, they could have a windlass or a, a pulley system to lift the furniture up into the doorway and there, thereby get the furniture up there without nearly as much trouble as trying to make it up a narrow stairway. Another potential use, and this is probably more folklore, is that it was an escape hatch uh, during the polygamy era. If one of these homes was owned by a polygamist um, during the 1880s when the federal uh, raiders were trying to um, arrest and imprison polygamists, uh, the story is that they could go up to the top floor and when the uh, federal uh, person went down on the bottom floor, the, the polygamous husband could jump out the top and run away. Um, who knows, maybe that did happen. I'm sure if it did, there were a lot of uh, broken ankles and legs in the process though. So there's a little uh, story on Utah folklore and the angel doors. So I, to end on, I wanted to show kind of a quirky little house. This one, as you can see, has an off-center chimney, meaning that it is a hall parlor with the smaller room on the left and the larger one on the right. And we won't look at that little side room addition that was added later. We're just looking at the main house here. But you'll notice that the windows are not symmetrical. I'm not sure why that is. If maybe there wasn't a window at one time, or maybe they moved the window for um, probably to accommodate interior use better. But this shows that uh, all, all parlor houses are not symmetrical, although the good majority of them are. So that is our um, subject of hall parlor houses in Utah, probably the most common housing type from the mid 19th century up into the early 20th century of Utah. Um, I hope you've learned something today. Next time you hit a small town and drive through and see um, historic buildings, maybe you'll be able to find out if it's a, a health parlor or not just by looking at the outside. Or if you're brave, maybe you'll go up and knock on the door and ask them if you can see the inside, although I wouldn't recommend that. I um, hope you've enjoyed this again, and we will cover a, another housing type next time. Thanks.